Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name's Tony. This is the 15 Minute Gamer, and today I've been checking out Chernobyl Liquidators, which is out now on Steam for just over £15, and that's with 10% off at the moment. Chernobyl Liquidators is not a fantastic tale of exploring the zone, it's a story about real people facing a real threat. The CNPP disaster, invisible radiation, KGB, difficult moral choices. Do you have enough courage and strength to take on the challenge? Before we start though, don't forget to drop this channel and subscribe as I head ever closer to my next target of 20,000 subs. And if you enjoyed the video, why not drop it a like? And with all that being said, let's get into gameplay. So this is a weird one to describe. It's kind of part walking simulator, part cleaning simulator with some platforming thrown in. The premise is you're in Chernobyl. Like the first level has you fighting fires and getting to the roof of the power plant. And as you do, your character auto dies. Like there's nothing you can do about it. And you give them like an end screen. And I checked one of the names on them ends and it was the same location and name as a person who died there in real life. And I thought that was a really nice touch. However, the game didn't really point that out. So I had to go out and look for it. I think it would have been really cool if they maybe put like a little bit of a page up or wiki or something to click on. I don't know. The second level has you like cleaning up toxic things and destroying evidence. And third level has you evacuating people from like outside the zone. So you got to go to the houses and persuade them to leave. The game is trying to do something a little bit different in the sense it's about the people and what it must have been like. But unfortunately, it tells it in such a boring way and the tasks get so boring and repetitive. As you clean or go to point to point doing the same task over and over again, it's not quite interesting enough. However, I will say they do mark the locations super well so you don't have to waste your time looking everywhere for a door like generally you know where that door is and how to get upstairs or whatever but when you're spraying a toxic cloud for the 20th time in a row you know it just loses any fun aspects sometimes you will get moral decisions like it might say oh should you tell them you found something or not and you can go off kilter a little bit like there's a computer to hack and you can choose to delete the file like you've been told or should you have a little bit of a read of it? There's also like reels and like should you keep it or destroy it like you've been told to. But I don't think these choices really lead to a massive bearing on the overall story. The game will take around about four and a half to five hours to complete. However, I got soft blocked at around about the two hour mark and I couldn't progress any further. And at that point, I'd kind of had enough. So I just said, you know, it's fine. I'm going to leave it there. And you know, when I was playing it, I was thinking... VR, that's where this game would have excelled. So much of it is VR feeling and the graphics as well are poor enough to be VR. So moving on to graphics, sounds and bugs. Graphics wise, I don't think the graphics were terrible. I mean, they're not the best out there by any stretch of the imagination. And as I said, it feels a bit like a VR game. There are some pretty bad animation glitches, bad character models, the movement feels a bit jank, there's clipping issues, and the textures in parts look pretty bad. But I will say one thing, it kind of gets the atmosphere decently done, and it's really nice to see Chernobyl, like in that time frame where it was just happening, like you go in the famous swim pool from like Call of Duty, but it's not got a massive hole in it and the water's in there. And I mean, I don't know if it's realistic looking, but seeing that thing that I've seen loads of times, like kind of what it maybe looked like at the time. And they've made the environments look like they were abandoned in a hurry, like this thing smashed on the floor, people's clothes lying around. And you can tell they've put some effort into that. And you know what? It gets some kudos for that. Sound design is pretty bad. The voice acting is terrible, but it's not AI voices, I don't think. And there's some bad sound design as well. I would have liked to have seen a lot more ambient sound, I think, as well. Like in level one, the sirens are left on for the fire engines. And my good God, does that get annoying after a while. Bugs and performance wise, it runs pretty poor. There's frequent stutters, frame rate issues, slow down. And there are a ton like a ton of bugs and glitches that really take away. 
So in conclusion, this was one of those reviews where I was a little bit in two minds with it. On one hand, I can see what they're trying to do. And they've obviously got quite a limited budget to do that on. But on the other hand, it's a bit too janky. There are too many bugs mixed with the repetitive tasks. They're not massively interesting interactions with NPCs. The running and walking from point to point just drag on a little bit too long. And I know it's trying to be super serious, but I think it could have done with some dark humor or just something to add a bit of fun to break up the game a little. I would have loved to seen a little bit more lore and story dotted around, maybe in the form of handwritten notes or audio tape or just echoes or just something to break that up. Because, you know, when you're on your 20th thing of spraying some toxic cloud, you're just kind of wishing for something else to happen. However, there is something here. There is an interesting story and the developers really care and want to tell that story and have tried to make it as realistic as possible to tell that story. I think if the sort of performance issues out, they need some quality of life improvements, correct the tutorials and spell mistakes, cut down on them repetitive tasks and make it a bit more of an experience in that walking simulator type genre. I feel like it could have been better because when I was playing it, I just kept thinking that could have been better. That could have been better presented. That should be better written. I want to see more motion. That's one thing I felt a lot is I didn't feel there was enough emotion coming from the characters when the events were happening. I really think they could have sold that story more. Can I recommend this game? I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. I think it's worth sticking on your wish list and keep an eye out for like maybe a sale or when they make the vast amount of bug fixes and improvements they're going to have to make to this game. And once all that's done, I will definitely revisit this game and finish off the story because I'm kind of interested where it goes. Right, guys, that's all I have to say on the matter. Catch you all later. Goodbye.